This is your EHC TV sports interview, which is also heard on WEHC. If you're listening on WEHC right now, we're in halftime of the NC Wesley and Emory and Henry game, and we'll get you back to that game right after this interview. My guest today rushed for 40 touchdowns to see, wait, wait, that's not right. That would be Caleb Jennings, and I was just testing you in the open to see if you guys knew your ENH sports trivia. Instead, my guest is Coach Stephen Devine of the ENH men's soccer team. Coach Devine, nice to have you on today. Thanks for having me. Uh, now, you guys are already in season, several mm -hmm. games in, in fact. And I think you guys uh, played some scrimmages before the season as well. Yep, yep. Um, now, Coach Devine, you also were a player back here, and you graduated with your undergraduate degree in 2007. Correct, correct. correct. So what kind of experience do you think that gives you, particularly since you played here as well as coaching here, uh, as a coach and a player? Uh, being a player here, um, I obviously know what the competition is like in the conference, um, which then again goes to recruiting. And, and me and Coach Fravel, we both play here, so we both know exactly the caliber of player that we need to be successful in the conference, which, which I think comes straight from our experience from playing here. Kind of like apples to apples. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Okay, you're in your second season as an assistant here, is that correct? Correct. Does that, do you think that gives you a better appreciation uh, as, as a second-year man versus a first-year man, you know, knowing, because it's been a couple of years since you've been in the conference, and yeah. you never know that things change, yep. athletes change. It's always going to be a tough conference. Um, the competition soccer-wise on the men's and women's side is very tough uh, in the ODAC. But, you know, uh, being the second year just helps me learn the ropes a little bit more, um, knowing exactly how to get to all the schools just in case, um, knowing exactly what I need to do on the way trips, before the trips, and, and during home games, setting up and everything. So second year is really, uh, first year gave me a lot of experience. Second year is really where I'm learning exactly, you know, how to recruit and, and more hands-on stuff. And so since you graduated in 07, that would have meant you played under Coach Appleby as Correct. well as uh, coach with Coach Frable. Yep. And yep. Um, what, what, what are the differences between them? What, what are the things that... They may do better or worse than one another. Um, they're, they're both good guys. They're both great coaches. Um, Travis obviously is a lot younger, and, and he's got um, a few more years till he reaches his prime. Coach Appleby knew exactly what he wanted to do with the game, uh, knew what he wanted to do with us before every game. Uh, the difference really is is, is Coach Frable is a little bit more social. Um, not um, He doesn't really put you in awkward social situations, if you know what I mean. Coach Appleby, great guy. Sometimes he had a dry sense of humor, and it was, it was fun talking with him. Um, but you could be a little bit scared even though he had an open-door policy. Travis is very open, um, really cares about the guys, and, and, and they know it, and they can come in and speak with him whenever and, and talk about formation or what they're doing wrong or what they need to do to get more playing time. And it's a little bit more easy, easier to approach him than Appleby. Right. Uh, what are your responsibilities with the team? You talked about recruiting. Uh, what, what do you do officially <coughs> for an assistant coach? Um, as the assistant, uh, pretty much I help out with recruiting, as w uh, like I said, and – um, if I need to do anything, fill in for Coach Frable, uh, say he needs to go on a scouting report and, and go watch some, some of the teams that we're playing in the conference. Um, I'll run practice, uh, help set up the field for practice, um, help with the uh, WASP Advantage team meetings, um, academic meetings and stuff like that, help set up meetings, get word out about practice when it is, and, and if we do have team meetings, what time it is and, and where we're meeting. So I'm like a liaison to the players, so Travis just tells me and, and I can just focus on getting the message out. Well, you mentioned you know what caliber of athlete you need in the conference having played uh, here. What do you think is the caliber of athlete you're bringing in right now? Um, we're definitely improving on that, um, as opposed to in the past where we had a few players that, you know, could play at, co at, at the college level but maybe could not be successful in the ODAC. Now we're actually getting players that, you know, even at our lowest tier of player, they can still hang with some of the lower players in the, co in the conference. And... and we're definitely getting some players in the conference that are, you know, top level. And that's always, always good. It's always a good thing. What do you think is the best thing that this team is doing so far? I know it's early in the season, but what do you think is the best team? And what do you think is the thing that the team needs to improve on? Um, I think the best thing is they've really, you know, grown to like each other. It's like a family. And Coach Fravel really preaches that. And um, another thing is, is they're youthful and they're young. So, you know, the energy level is there. And, and we can put them through a lot more things than opposed to having a very um, – a highly veteran team or a team with a lot of older guys and uh, the the thing that they need to work on um, that we found out this past weekend at Suwannee is uh, they really need to focus the whole game um, coming in and out of halftime they need to be focused and be ready to play the next the second half the next 45 minutes uh, it's just just small things that you know young people young mistakes so we're getting over it and and hopefully 
um, we'll get over them before the conference play. What about P.J. Henson as a player? Uh, I know he was ODAC Player of the Week, I think, last yes, he week. Was. Um, for the two goals that he scored in extra time or yep. in overtime. Uh, what, what, what kind of player is he? What kind of team does he make you guys? Uh, P.J. is a, a different player. He's very dynamic. He's creative. Um, he watches a lot of soccer, which I think makes him better. Um, you really need to watch soccer and, and idolize somebody and, and kind of root on for somebody. Obviously, his, his favorite player is Cristiano Ronaldo, if you can't tell by the hairstyle. Um, what he adds to the team is, is a lot of coaches in the conference recognize him. Um, he's, just, he's just another headache for them, you know. He's very creative on the ball. Not too many defenders in this conference can defend him one-on-one, -on -one, which is great to have and, and going to goal. He's, he's amazing. He can finish like, like nobody I've ever seen. Um, if, we, if he's having a good day, uh, watch out. If he's having a bad day, it's, it's up to me and Coach Bramble to get him moving and motivated. So. Right. Uh, you mentioned P.J., who's a junior. You also have several other players who are upperclassmen, Daniel mm -hmm. Mills, Eric Olson. Mm -hmm. You said you have a youthful team. Talk about what kind of leadership those guys can provide to those youthful players that are coming in right now. Um, that, that's, it's very important to have you know, leadership, especially older guys that can come in and, and show the younger guys exactly you know, how we need to be playing, um, what, what type of level we need to be at in order to be successful in the conference. So day in and day out of practice, that's their job pretty much, is to get the guys going, get them motivated. You know, let's, have, let's have a better practice today than we did yesterday every day. So it's, it's very important that we have them on the team. Okay, uh, Coach Devon, you mentioned that if you watch soccer, you become a better player. Yep. Uh, do you support any international or club team and watch um, them on a regular basis? Of course, my number one international team is USA. Uh, my number two team is Spain. Uh, my favorite club team is Liverpool. Liverpool. Uh, mainly Spain and Liverpool for Fernando Torres. He's my favorite player. I think he's the best striker in, in the world right now. So. How do you think the Americans in general will fare uh, at the 2010 World Cup should they qualify and in the future? Uh, as they continue this uh, upgrade that they're in? I think as the sport becomes more popular in the U.S., it's definitely going to help out at the youthful level. Um, a lot of you know, clubs and, and youth clubs in the United States are you know, going to academy level and, and just you know, trying out different things. And I think once we find our niche, it's going to get up there with the European level. So th that's not going to be coming soon, but it's, it's, it's going to come hopefully in, in the future. Anything else you want to say? Um, come out and support us. Uh, our schedule's on the Internet. Um, the more fans, the merrier. The louder it gets, the better we play. So, Check out GoWasps.com for the ENH men's soccer schedule. Thanks for coming on the show today, Coach Devon. Thank you.